Hello, everybody. I just flew back in from Berlin, Germany, where I attended the Nextcloud Community Conference, one of my favorite events of the year, which, by the way, big shout out to Nextcloud for helping me when it comes to the travel expenses to actually go ahead and get over there. So bias disclosure. And at the event, of course, they had the keynote where they announced all their new features and the updates, but there was a bunch of lightning talks, other keynotes, discussions, workshops. It was fun. I got to go to a press dinner and talk with some of the other creators and journalists that were there, including Gardner Bryant, which was cool to finally meet him, in which I ended up talking to him for a lot of the conference, talking Linux, YouTube, video editing. It was, it was just a good time overall. Now, while the conference was awesome, and I do recommend if you ever have the opportunity to go ahead and attend their community conference, this video is about some of the things that were announced during that conference, particularly in the very first keynote in which they released Nextcloud Hub 25 Autumn. They did kind of a version jump thing, similar to kind of what Apple did, but Nextcloud makes a little bit more sense instead of going with the next year, it's the current season. They're, they're switching to seasons. So 25 Autumn is a pretty big change. There's a lot of a ton of different improvements, feature additions, graphical and design changes. And instead of going over absolutely everything, because if I head over to their actual announcement page for this, I will end up getting carpal tunnel if I go ahead and try to scroll all the way through this. So instead, this is going to be my seven big things, big changes that stood out to me. And of course I'll link to their full announcement video and their blog post on this release down below. And actually, if I go over here, I got my little script ready to go, which you can see right here. And the first thing is gonna be the new design and user experience. Now, there has been some uh, pretty dramatic changes in this front. The icons have moved from fields to outlines, a little bit more modern, sleek, professional looking. Buttons are more elevated, inputs are more inset, so everything's more clickable. I don't know how to word it. <laughs> Helps users feel at ease in their digital workspace. That's a good way to put it. Makes it more tactile. The interactions are a little bit more satisfying. If I actually go out of here, you can see some of these icons on the top have a new gradient. So that looks a little bit different. And in applications such as talk here, the home pages of some of these applications have been redesigned, polished to make it more user friendly and to get more information and detail out of the home pages. For example, here on talk, you can see we have our upcoming meetings, unread men mentions, just more appealing applications in general. Next is their smarter privacy first AI assistant. It has got some changes. And first I'll kind of mention here, the visual changes since we're kind of transitioning from that subject is anything with AI kind of has this blue and purple gradient going on with it. So it's kind of easier to distinguish what is AI and what isn't. The AI assistant has been around for a little while now, but now you are able to generate entire documents, spreadsheets, and presentations from a single text prompt, providing a complete starting point for any new task, which is nice. I generally don't let AI generate entire things for me, but doing this does kind of give you a good outline foundation and some ideas to help you get started when you're uh, trying to create something. It's new context. Chat allows you to actually find files by describing what you're looking for, such as you can say something like, show me the marketing slides from last quarter, and it will go ahead and find those. The assistance to agents can also perform complex actions, such as creating tasks in deck, which is nice, or even reading your latest emails. Critically, and if you know anything about Nextcloud's AI stuff, this is important. Uh, of course, you can link it up to like OpenAI and use API keys, but you can use your very own like Olama server and self-host all the AI yourself, which is critical if you're really worried about privacy and you don't want these big tech companies using your data that you input into AI to their benefit. Next is the Nextcloud Talk. And Nextcloud Talk isn't something that I've really used too much, but after some of these recent changes, I definitely want to. And first is their threaded conversation, a feature that has been needed as chat rooms generally without threaded conversations can get rather messy. I personally have had the displeasure of having to use Slack for a little while and the threaded conversations there is actually really, really nice and helpful. And it's really cool that Nextcloud Hub is getting this. So you can now reply directly to a specific message, keeping side discussions neatly contained and preventing context from getting lost. So that's nice. Also with Nextcloud Talk, if you actually use the talk kind of video chat feature, 
Uh, they have AI powered subtitles now, which can be enabled during calls. And this provides real time transcriptions of the conversations, which even if it's really good if you have hearing impairments, but if you don't, I'm somebody that uses captions on movies no matter what. So it's, it's just a nice feature to have. Now, sticking with their groupware stuff, going over to calendar, as I actually have more things in my life to do, I do definitely rely more and more on the calendar. And they added a feature, which is very nice, which is a meeting proposal poll feature. Inside Nextcloud, you can select your internal team members to see their availability directly. You can have them pick between several time slots through a simple clean poll. Participants can then vote on those times. And after all the participants vote, you could see what everybody's availability is, see where everybody lines up and then schedule the meeting from there with confidence that everybody will be able to make it, which is nice. And really cool, I said internal team members, this also works externally, so you can invite anybody to vote on these polls that you may want to have in a meeting, whether that be your actual Nextcloud people in the platform or anybody externally. So that is definitely a great feature overall. Next, and this is kind of hard to demonstrate properly, but that is the speed performance. Now, just as, as an example, to the best of my ability, this is deck. And if you use Nextcloud in the past, you know, jumping between pages, sometimes there could be a little bit of delay, especially if you open something like a docx file from Nextcloud, actually loading Nextcloud Office usually takes a little bit of time. Now, if I go to files, you can see it is rather rapid if I go to projects. Nextcloud, go to this version of the script and boom, it's open, ready to go. Nice. <laughs> Hub 25 Autumn feels significantly faster and more responsive across the board. File uploads technically have the ability to be up to six times faster thanks to the improvements in chunked upload, which also makes transferring large files much more reliable. And as you saw, the entire platform is snappier due to a 15% reduction in database queries. Desktop users will experience massive performance improvements in the virtual file system, which makes browsing your cloud files in your native file explorer on the desktop feel basically instantaneous. And on macOS specifically, VFS is now near instant, reduces battery drain while on Windows. There's a new keep file locally option, which is really nice for offline access for specific files instead of needing to sync entire directories. And on kind of the subject of apps, I have had the moderate displeasure over the last year of using iPhone. I'm definitely an Android guy, but everybody in my family uses it. I wanted the raw Apple ProRes, so you win some, you lose some. And luckily, this is one of the first times I've won some using iPhone because Nextcloud completely rebuilt their iOS application, specifically this application right here. Focusing on the design, this is iOS 16, and they do have the um, aesthetics down really well here. It blends in, it feels like a native Apple application now. The app is incredibly faster and it's significantly more reliable. They boast about 80% fewer instability issues, all while feeling completely at home in the iOS environment. And also really cool, and they did demo this during the keynote, and that is the multitasking features with iPad OS. If you happen to use that, you can have iCloud in split screen, drag and drop files in between the uh, various windows, and if you actually sign into a different account in one window, so you have kind of multi-account action going on, you can drag and drop files between accounts just using the multitasking feature in iOS on iPad. Very cool stuff. And they say that background tasks now are far more dependable, which I have actually noticed because when I set up a uh, kind of auto backup folder, it just tends to work sometimes or before it didn't all the time. And I'd have to like manually open the application to make sure it was working. Now I don't seem to have that issue. So nice. And now the final thing that we're at least gonna mention in this video is the intuitive and powerful Nextcloud Office. You can see here, I opened this version of the script. And if I highlight this, a new contextual pop over menu appears when you select text, putting the most common formatting tools right at your fingertips. If I select that, let go, what do you know? You have those most common formatting things right here. So we can easily increase the size, underline it, do whatever we need to do, add comments for collaborative working. It's just really nice to have this, especially if you have like a 4K monitor and you don't have to ugh, go all the way to the top there, come back down. It just 
makes it a much smoother experience overall. Also, these toolbars are a little bit different, so they now have contextual tabs that appear only when you need them. For example, this picture here that I made for uh, the Netbird channel, if I go ahead and click on this, boom, it opens up picture right there automatically ready to go. So we can quickly make edits to this. It assumes, hey, clicked on a picture. You probably want to be in the picture tab. Very nice. And same goes with like if you're in the uh, Sheets application, basically Excel, it will open up formulas if you're messing with that. Very nice. Overall, everything's a little bit less cluttered. You use it more efficiently. It is nice. One thing, kind of visual things you may notice, of course, like with Nextcloud in general, the icons have changed so it looks a little bit more professional. But instead of using whatever primarily co primary color you pick in your settings, it will use the colors that you kind of expect from the platforms. So this uh, writer or Microsoft Word alternative here is going to be blue. But if I close this out here, create a new spreadsheet, drop into here, you can see it's green and you could assume what the rest are. Now, those are my big seven things, but I'm going to quickly touch on some other things that are very nice. One is there are a bunch of new templates that you'll kind of notice. So you could go experiment, play around with those. And if I actually go back over to deck and go to my uh, deck for this video I'm making here, uh, they changed it. So in any application that uses just the standard uh, Nextcloud text, you now have these kind of like Notion where you can just drag these blocks around, which makes it really easy for or really helpful for things like moving tables, images around, stuff like that. So that's a really nice addition that I've noticed. And just overall, there is so much going on. You can see here, new, new uh, templates, intuitive office. I will be linking to this down below. A fresh look in collectives, which is nice. It's the main homepage for collectives was relatively bland. So it's nice that they took a, took a look and improved that, which I do personally use that a lot for my internal documentation for like video editing and things like that. But yeah, there's just so much, too much to cover in a single video. Here's the thing about multitasking there. I'll go ahead and link this down below. And uh, since I'm, I, you could probably tell that I reinstalled Nextcloud kind of tinkering and playing around with a fresh instance. Once I get all everything set up, I'm going to go ahead and make a video in which I go over my setup, all the apps that I'm actually using now, because it's been quite a while since I made that video and there have been some significant changes in how I personally use Nextcloud in my everyday. So subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss that video. And with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.